Baseball is back in full swing, and as such, you might be seeing shots like this pop up on social media. Was this created by a specialized camera that can lock onto a 100 mile per hour fastball? Not so much. It's a very easy post-production technique that you can employ at home for your own amateur sports filming or perhaps for making Instagram reels of your favorite teams with nothing more than Adobe After Effects. It does require footage that is larger than the intended output composition. So considering that we're gonna be posting to social media, which usually requests a 1080p output, ideally you want to be starting with 4K. 6K, even better. 8K, I don't even think we're gonna to have to get to the second part of this tutorial. 12K, perfect. With that, let's just jump in to Adobe After Effects. I have this video clip of Softball, which I downloaded from the Fedevo library. The pitcher pitches the ball and then presumably the batter knocks it deep into the field with everyone watching the ball fly far. It's a cool little shot, but we can certainly add some extra flair by zooming in and following the ball. So first we want to isolate where the camera track will occur. In this particular shot, I'm looking to follow the ball from the moment that the pitch is released until the ball flies out of frame. So to do this, we're going to double click our footage and bring it into the layer window and then select the tracking tab. Here, we now need to select track motion. Now for some bad news. The problem with 24 frames per second footage and incredibly fast moving objects like a baseball is that they leave nothing but a motion trail of color. It's not wholly ideal for tracking an object. In fact, if I do just place this uh, motion tracker over the ball and click track forward, you can see it doesn't latch onto the softball at all. So we're gonna have to track this manually However, the good news is that given the speed of pitches and the exit velocity of hits, this manual tracking is not gonna take long at all because the ball is only in view for a number of seconds, perhaps two seconds at most. So with the tracking complete, I'm gonna add a new null layer and then a new camera. And in the tracking window, I'm going to edit the object and select null, then hit apply. When we open the null object layer properties, we can now see the tracking points but only for this section where the ball is in flight, which is what I want. Next, we need to parent the camera to the null object. And when you hit play, you'll see that nothing happens, but it's because we now need to change the footage to a 3D layer. So we need to check this box here. And upon doing so, the camera locks onto the ball with great effect. However, it's a big one. The footage now falls out of frame because we're centering on the ball. This does not look great. But this is where the comfort of posting to social media, which generally requests 1080p footage, comes into play. Therefore, the composition size should be decreased from 4K to 1080p, and the footage layer should be scaled down so it fills the composition. Then, just as the pitcher pitches the ball, we can snap zoom in. And we want to leave the null object and the camera layer alone, but instead set the keyframes for scale and position on the footage layer. This is because we're going to be scaling the footage back up rather than zooming in, so to speak, even though it's given the same effect. And now upon scaling the footage back to its original size within the 1080p comp, there's not going to be a loss of clarity. So it's a win-win. Now you can choose how much to zoom in, but essentially the more you zoom in, or in this case, scale up, uh, the greater the effect of following the ball. So a few frames before the ball is set to be released, activate the position and scale keyframe and then move a few frames in and scale your footage back up. This in turn will create the zoom effect. I recommend in making the transition an easy ease keyframe, which you can do so by selecting the keyframes and then holding F9. And if you turn on motion blur for the footage layer, it also adds the element of speed to the movement. You might ask why we have also set the keyframe for the position, considering that we have a 3D camera layer doing the movement. Well, the position keyframe is just to clean up the possible blank space creeping into view so we can retract throughout the shot. As we're only slightly nudging the position placement a touch because we've increased the scale, it shouldn't be that noticeable in the slightest. At the end of the sequence, you can either cut back to the full composition or do another crash zoom, but in reverse. Either way, this is the result. All right, guys, this has been Lewis with Fedivo. Although we have focused on softball and baseball within this tutorial, this can practically be done with any sports that uses a ball, football, rugby, tennis. 
but the faster the ball is going, often the better the effect. All right, I will catch you next week with another tutorial and remember to subscribe if you haven't.